you did the best Kanye albums, man. You did all those first albums that are just like oh, unbelievable, the most I, iconic. I had shit some that... good years in there, yeah. <sighs> <laughs> you know, with him, we did uh, the dropout and at yeah. Larrabee on, on other people's budget, honestly, because yeah. they didn't believe in him. Nobody believed in him. Yeah. And we would mix other artists, and we come in at 10, record him, MP program, and and uh four o'clock five o'clock and shit i maybe should mix the song before the client gets here and i would throw a mix up in like three hours they would show up he play it mix is great boom done print and then we continue doing this album that was college dropout that was college dropout unbelievable yeah, man. dude and then they uh and borrowed time from other people yeah. yeah and then the accident happened and that yeah. changed everything because they they were about to drop them yeah they, Rockville, I feel like they were about to drop him, you know, because uh, he, he, if you think about it, at the time it was all, you know, oversized jerseys and yeah. like it was a different era, right? And he's, you know, the backpack with pastel, he yeah. didn't fit the Rockefeller. And For I don't, sure. you know, I, I get it. And then the accident happened. and that, You the mean the car accident? The car accident. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, leaving, the, leaving the studio. He was leaving, and he was leaving, leaving your session, right? He was leaving at record plant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He left and unfortunately got into a car accident and. We all got the call, and a week later, a week later, G called me. He's like, hey, he wants to get back in. I'm like, what are you talking about? This guy almost died. G I mean, Roberson? Yep, Yeah, yep. he's Kanye's manager at yep, the time. at the time, yeah. Yep. Love G. Uh, so we got back in the studio, and he's his mouth was wired shut. You know, we ordered lunch. It was chili. We had to put it through a blender cause, so he could drink the chili, you know? I mean, I couldn't believe it. This is talking like this. Gets behind the mic in Studio Two, and we record the verse. It's it was incredible. And then he, you know, he funded his own the first video through the wire himself, and yeah. put it out himself. And fuck, man, I never seen the trajectory kind of like that. Um, Amazing, yeah. It's a it's some historic, crazy to see, yeah, firsthand, you know, some historic shit. Yeah. yeah, I mean you've and you've watched him evolve. <laughs> yeah, oh, I mean yeah. I know now he's not in your life. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's you know we everything has a beginning, middle, and end. Yeah, to anything, right? And I yeah. feel, look, if we never work again, look, I wish him the best. He's an incredible artist. I mean, yeah. I always called him a genius in the studio because he was, and a genius for me. He he's not technical. He's not someone that can tell you how to do it or what to do. He's just like an emotional guy. Right. Yeah. So going through that journey of picking his brain and getting into his head, that was incredible for me and seeing his mind work right in front of me and him guiding me and almost like he's the puppet master and he's just utilizing me to get to what he wants and needs, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he did it many times, and I'm like, this is never gonna work. It's never gonna work. And you know, like, you know, like controlling me in a way. And next thing you know, it's like he goes, "That's it, boom!" And you snap out of it, and you play it back, and you're like, "Fuck! <laughs> the, how did he think of that? How did we get here? How? I I can't even explain it. You yeah. know, I, to me, that's a genius. That's a visionary. Yeah. You know, in the studio, it was, it was just, and I saw that hundreds of times. So wow. to the point where you just like trust what he, you know, and then you of course challenge him and you go back and forth and you keep yeah. pushing and he keeps manipulating. And, and that was really how we were, were making a lot of those records and, you know, mixing those records back then. You know? is, is there one in particular that, uh, song or yeah, album or, yeah. well, you know, I feel like 808s and Heartbreak was yeah. an interesting album because yeah. I, they had mixed the whole thing already. And he wasn't quite happy. And he's like, man, you got eight days. Can you make this happen? He was on tour. I think he was in Brazil one day. The next day he was in China. I mean, this guy was everywhere. So he never showed up for any of the mixes. So I went, went ahead and booked two rooms at Larrabee and started mixing it. So that was probably the most challenging album for me. Because if you listen to the album, it's really dark and distorted and heavy and singing like at the time you're like why is he singing he's what we just came off of stronger you know yeah. why is he all, all of a sudden he wants to be a singer like no no one understood that but the sound like love lockdown was like just almost lo-fi yeah and for me i always wanted to make things brighter in a way you know yeah. it was the, the complete opposite i yeah. came from this school of like make it more lush for whatever that means right, right, right. so for him it'd be like that was a huge transition for 
on, you know, personally on the how I approach mixes. And that taught me that, look, it doesn't matter how much highs or lows or bright or not. It's just that emotional connection you have to that piece of work. That was challenging. And, you know, and I, and I, like any job in the world, adapt or you die, right? Yeah. And it's like, fuck, I got to almost like, let me put the fucking other set of ears, you know, just to adapt to this grimy, greasy, nasty, not bright sounding records. Yeah. I had not, I had never done that like before. Yeah. So uh, to me, that was like, Love Lockdown was a huge lesson for me on how to approach mixes. Yeah. So, hey, man, the guy's, again, musical genius. 